today while you still can God's mercy is that none of you would die and go to hell he died to save you not so you could keep sinning he died to give you another chance but you must come to him today while you still can the Bible says seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near Oh, the Lord is still near today. Don't shut the Lord out of your life. Don't shut him out of your life today. Because there's two paths in this life. There's the straight and narrow, and only few are on that path. And then there's the wide and broad, where it seems so appealing to the flesh. Everyone's on this path, or so it seems. But Jesus says that there's many on this path that leads to damnation. And the reason why it seems like there's no urgency to get off is because there's so many people on it. People don't feel guilty for lying when they surround themselves with liars. People don't feel guilty for drunkenness when they surround themselves with drunkards. Fornicators, they don't feel bad for their sin when they're engaging in fornication with other fornicators you see sin always loves company sin loves company but you must realize that one day you'll have to stand before God yourself you'll have to stand before God by yourself you won't be able to bring any friends with you your attendance to church means nothing if you're still living in sin That's like bringing filthy rags before a holy and righteous God when you're still living in sin yourself. But Jesus is calling you out of your sin today. He's calling you out of your sin today. You must acknowledge that you're without hope. You must acknowledge that you're on your way to hell. There must be a self-revelation that you're in condemnation you must realize that without Christ there is no life that without Christ you will perish in hell but only then when someone comes to that realization when they are in revelation when they have that revelation of their eternity and where they stand now before God When you realize that, my friends, the next step is repenting and getting right before God. You must come to God today. He is near to the brokenhearted, the Bible says. And you must be brokenhearted over your sin. Are you brokenhearted over your sin? Are you just going to continue to party up with the boys, with the girls, have one night stands? with no strings attached. Oh, but my friends, there are different strings attached to your sin, and God will bring it all up on the day of judgment. He'll show it to you. He'll show it to you on the day of judgment that all that, all that you've done in private is the reason why he will send you to hell, and he doesn't want to. You must understand we're not out here to condemn you. You know, Jesus came into this world not to condemn sinners. God is good. God is good. 
But are you good? Are you good? Are you good though? Because the Bible says none is good but God. You must come to God and He can clean you up. You see, a lot of people will say all these Bible phrases and know the right Christianese to speak. But if you don't have Christ, that was so filthy. You need to, you need to get right with God. You need to have respect for your body. Hey, he's up, bro. Turn to Jesus. Jesus Christ is the one that can cleanse you. To where you don't have to dress half naked out here to attract boys. And yes, that's what they are if they're attracted to you that way, is boys. Because a true man of God, a true man of God will not look at the outward appearance of a woman lustfully. They'll look at the state of the heart of that woman. Not the chest of the woman, but the heart of the woman. And Jesus Christ is after the heart. But many of you are after a man in this world. And that's Satan. Satan, he is the father of those who are children of disobedience. Satan is not a good father to have. Satan wants to destroy you. Satan wants to destroy you, yes. If you, if you are sinning, you belong to Satan. Yes, if you're, if you're living in sin, you're sinning. No, I'm not in sin. No, I'm not. What's my sin? What's my sin? No, I'm going to preach wherever the Lord leads me. And, and clearly I'm in the right place depending on whether... Yeah, you're falsely accusing me. You're falsely accusing me. How, what did I accuse you of? No, you need to turn from your sin. You proved that I'm at the right place to preach tonight. You need to put clothes on and turn to Jesus. Oh, I have clothes on. And God can clothe you in righteousness. You know, God can cleanse you today. He can cleanse the filthy mouth woman. He can cleanse the filthy mouth man. To where you don't have to speak perversities. But you know, the preaching of the gospel is only like an aroma of death to those who love death. Because you don't want to hear that drunkenness is wrong. You don't want to hear that fornication is wrong or lying is wrong. You'll even go as far as saying, who even makes the standard of right or wrong? But you'll live by your own standard of morality, which doesn't make any sense. It's all in vain. But the Bible says most men will proclaim their own goodness. Are you proclaiming your own goodness today? Do you think you're a good person? Do you think you're a good person without Christ? Because the Bible says that no man is good. When's the last time you thought about your eternity? When's the last time you thought about eternity? Do you know when you're going to take your last breath? Because the reality is, all of us are going to die. And if you die in your sin today, then it's eternal, it's eternal hell. Yeah. Do you sin? No, I don't sin. I have sinned in the past, but I don't continue to live in sin. Never. You, you, don't see, you, you don't sin anymore? No, I don't. And I don't have to, and you don't have to, by the grace of God. So you never sin? I didn't say that. I already no. claimed that I have sinned in the past. But you never this is sin. why I need Christ. This current. is why you need Christ. I I'm asking you that. So are you without sin? No. Then do you really have Christ? Yes. So why are you still living in sin? Not living in sin, but I sin. So are you going to be without sin all night tonight? Probably not. Are you? Why? Are you? Why? Are you? We're talking about you right now. And you? yes, to answer your question, yes, I do plan to yeah, be without I mean, sin. I plan to, yeah, I plan to, but are you going are to? Are you going to? Yes, I am. I can by Christ, yes. But are you going to by Christ? What sin can you not overcome by the strength of God? 
But what, so what is sin? Sin is transgression against God's law. Anything contrary to what God commands us to do. So that means you have to know everything that God wants for you. And that's what you have the Holy Spirit for, yes. I have the Holy Spirit. So why are you out here? Why, you're out here. No, no, I'm just asking you, why are you out here? I, well, with you or are you just saying in general? No, just out here in general. Question. I mean, it's pretty simple. Why are you out here? Have a good time. What is a good time? Enjoying friendship with my guys. Okay, and how do you enjoy that friendship? But my, my, but my, my, my bigger question is though. I mean, you don't want to answer the question. You said that sin is transgression against God. So against in order God's law. God's law. In order for you to not sin, you have to know all of God's law. And this is what you have the Holy Spirit for. He's the one that can keep you from sin. Don't you agree that each temptation is the invitation to sin? I would, in order to you, in order to, in order to sin against God's law, you have to know all the laws, correct? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, th this is what the Holy Spirit is for. Once, once you are in sin, the Holy Spirit will convict you of that if you're not aware of it. But if you know that it's sin and you do it anyways, then that's still sin. That's fair. But what if you don't but, know? Well, then God's not going to hold you accountable to what you don't know. But do you know that it's wrong to get drunk? That's probably, yeah. I'll I mean, everyone... Wrong to get drunk. I mean, God is going to send drunkards to hell. What is drunkness? Anything that alters your mind. But is it like a... If you're not in a sober state, you're you're not in a, you're not going to be able to discern right from wrong. Occasional drunkenness is the same thing as drunkenness. All drunkenness is drunkenness. See, I don't know. Whether it's occasional or if it's full time. I don't know if I agree with that. I mean. So you think you, somebody that's sober Monday through Friday, but gets drunk on Saturday, sober on Sunday, is the same as someone that gets drunk every day of the week? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, absolutely. You think God thinks that? Absolutely, it says it in his word. What's, what does it say in the word? First Corinthians chapter six verses nine through ten. What is that? It condemns drunkards. But you can, so you consider a drunkard someone that gets drunk once. So what what is a drunkard to you then? A drunkard was someone that relies on alcohol and they get drunk every day. Like they they have to have it. No so the act itself is drunkenness, correct? Yes, which you have. So if you're doing that act, what are you at that point? At that point you're drunkard. Okay, exactly, that's my at point. That at that point, so that that's who he's condemning to hell right there. A drunkard. A drunkard. But someone that he's drunk once a night, once a week, once a day. I think you're week. just trying to justify your sin. No, no, no I, I'm, I'm I'm being genuine. No, I mean it's very it's very so, evident though. So do you think a drunkard? So you think one person a person gets drunk once a night is the same as someone who's drunk every day of the week? Absolutely. I don't, I don't know if I agree. With I mean, if it's once a night and you say it's every day of the week, that's still every day of the week because it's once a night. No, I mean, once, once a, no, no, I'm saying one night out of the week versus so every day of the week. So that's still, by that act alone, that person is partaking in drunkenness. And that what? person is a drunkard. <laughs> I don't think so. So, okay, let me ask you this. If someone partakes and they're not a homosexual, but they partake in homosexual acts, what are they? What? That's a whole different. No, it's the same concept. No, no. You, you can say it's a different I'll, I'll sin, but it's the same I'll concept. No, but you, you just so if you tell me a lie, okay, if you tell me a lie, oh, no, what no. are you? One is but. One lie. If you tell me one lie, what are you? But what if it's not to hurt you? It's still a lie. It could be a white lie, black lie, blue lie, purple lie. It doesn't matter. It's still a lie. Anything that deviates from the truth. It's operation by deception. I mean, you're just trying to twist it. No, 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 I'm being honest. I'm being genuine. I'm not trying to twist it. I feel like if God, if you're lying, and if God says you, you're lying with an intent not to hurt me. He says that all liars have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. When's that? Where's that at? Revelation 21 8. You can pull it up. I, I've heard that one. Yeah, pull it up. But are you. I <laughs> Is that so, is someone that lies to hurt, help someone, trying to help them, they feel So like, how can you help someone if you have to lie for them? Can't you be silent? Can't you be silent? God makes a way out of every temptation. But would you not agree that someone that's in their heart, they feel like they're lying to help them, is different than someone that's just lying to be lying? No, all lying is the same. 
all lying. Yeah, God never makes an excuse for sin, ever, not once. Some of that lying. God judges the heart, correct? You he judges that? the heart, yes. So if your heart is in a good place and you're so lying. So the Bible says that there's no good, um, there's no one good outside of God. I agree with that. So even if you try to do it out of a good heart, your heart's not been redeemed. To, it's all filthy rags before God in the first place. So like even what you're doing right now, it's filthy. No, because I've been cleansed. I've been cleansed. So are, are you, you're still living in sin, though. I ain't figured. Because he told me. What did I, what did I tell you? At the beginning of our con, uh, conversation. What, what, what did I tell you? Well, so are you without sin? Yeah, probably not. So are you without sin, yes or no? I would probably say no. So you're, you're not without sin? I probably would say probably not. Okay, so are you going to be without sin the rest of the, uh, of the night? I don't think anyone was out without sin. Well, the Bible says otherwise. You can be without sin by the strength of God. I love God with all my heart. Um, well, you know what it means to love God, right? What does that mean? It means to keep His commandments, to be obedient to Him. He says that in John 14, 15. Do you love your, what do you think about the Bible verse that says don't judge? Paul says... Well, the Bible never says to not judge. He tells Paul, us how Paul to judge. Says, he judges fairly. Yeah, judge fairly. Paul says himself it's not his place to judge. I'm actually a Christian. No, so, so pull up the verse. Can you pull up the verse for me? Yeah. Because the Bible never says to not judge. It tells us how to judge. You judge fairly. But I'm no, saying, to judge righteously. Man, it's not the same thing. Do you have parents? Say that again. Do you have parents? Yeah, of course I have parents. Okay. Have you ever done anything? Have you ever done anything that made your parents ashamed? All right. Like, the only thing like, that they didn't want you to do. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I have. Yeah. Does that mean you didn't love them? I'm a Christian. I I actually agree with you. Well, that's what, verse. what verse are you pulling up? First uh, Corinthians five, first twelve. Yes, this is matters within the church. Yeah. Yeah, but the Bible also tells us to judge with righteous judgment, and that a spiritual man judges all things. First Corinthians two fifteen. I actually like judging. I'm saying, like, that's my point. Have you ever done anything that you made that that went against what your parents want you to do? Yeah, I have. Do you love your parents? Of course, I love my parents. But this is a spiritual love that we're talking about with God. So you're saying... So let me ask you this. Let me use the same analogy, but with a husband and a wife. If I said I love my wife, but I go cheat on her, do I love my wife? Not the same thing. It is the same thing. It's still That's sin. That's worse. No, because sin is like idolatry. Sin is like adultery to God. That's like the worst type of sin. Though. No, it's not. Adultery is not the worst type of sin? No, it's not. What's worse than adultery? A blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's, I mean, that's even... But it's like... You're like taking the effect, like it's like. I right. mean, you asked me what's worse than that. But it's like the, it's like the extreme right. It's like a less extreme than that. Well, I would say. It's lying. The so same. Would you say lying is the same as adultery? Or well, like God a does. White lie, the same as adultery. Well, there's no white lie or black lie. There isn't. All lying is the same. It's all operated by deception. I can't believe that. I mean, it's, it's what the word says. All liars will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. There's no way that says that. Uh, all lies. All liars. All no liars. liars. No, all, all liars. liars. What it, oh, so is a white lie still a lie? Yes. Okay, so that person's a liar. But, and no, it says all no, liars. No, 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 no. All black, white, purple, blue, whatever whatever color you want to give it. Yes. So why, why can't, why is it so, why is it a foreign concept for you to live holy? Okay, okay, let me ask you this. Are you a Christian? I am a Christian. I believe in Christ. The Christian, that those labels. That, that okay, I mean, we don't have to go by that label. Are you born again? Yes. Okay, so why are we contending back and forth on how to live holy? Why we can't live holy? I mean... I mean, we've been talking about sin all I day. I feel like you're judging. That's what I'm saying. I How am I judging? I, I don't appreciate you judging. That's what I mean. Well, I mean, you're judging me, but I don't. I don't care about judgment as long as it's right. I'm, I'm testing your. I make sure your judgments are fair. So what? What judgments are not fair? I'm. I'm testing. You. Okay. I don't. I don't mind being tested. That's fine. I agree. Yeah. We're I don't mind being forth. tested. Yeah. You're not, you're not getting upset. I mean, I'm, no, I'm not getting upset. upset. It's a civil conversation. Not even close. It's a civil conversation. Yeah. So I feel like we're, on, we're, like we're in the same Yeah, court. but my, my thing is, though, why are we contending on holiness if you're claiming to be a born-again believer? I know I'm born again. 100%. So did the Lord lead you out here to have a good time? It's kind of 
What's a good time? What's no, I was asking him what a good time was earlier. Leading me out here. I would say no, but I mean, it's not, but I wasn't looking for the Lord to lead me out here. Okay, so. But, it's, it's, but I have the Spirit, so the Spirit goes with me so the anywhere spirit, I go. So anybody, anybody the Bible says to not grieve the Spirit. Is that? If we're if we're led by the Spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I just got led by the Spirit. No, no, I'm saying I'm just quoting that Bible verse too. That if we're led by the Spirit, we won't give in to the the sin of the flesh. We won't give in to any sort of temptation at all. But that's like perfection. Yeah, Jesus commands perfection. But we're not gonna be perfect. We're human. So why would Jesus command us to do something we're not able to do? I agree. In our strength, we're not able to do it. But in his strength, we are. That's the act. Matthew 5, 48. That's the, so wait, so do you think we're not going to get into heaven if we're not perfect? So we get to heaven through Christ. And when we go through Christ, we can live perfect to get to heaven. We can't live perfect. Yes, we can. Yeah, you can't in your strength, but you can in Christ. <laughs> you can live morally perfect. Why is that a foreign concept? No, no, don't I'm, don't I'm, you I'm don't thinking, you? I'm thinking. Well, don't you like get excited that you don't have to give in to sin? But we're human. We're not well, it doesn't God. matter if you're human. If you have God the Spirit of God perfect. inside of you, you have no excuse. God is perfect. God is perfect. Yes. We're never gonna be perfect. So God was always perfect. We're never gonna be perfect. You and we I. are. We are and and morally perfect. Yes. The Bible says that we can be morally perfect, yes. We can be, but we're not going to be. So if it says we can be, that presents a possibility. It's a possibility. And all things with Christ is possible, right? It's possible. What's impossible with man is possible with God. But ending racism, ending racism in the United States is possible. But so we're have it. if you're talking about politics and all of that, I can't I'm speak for them. It's never, I mean, it's possible, but it's never going to have it. Well, not for everyone, maybe. It's but for gonna... those who really want God, those who are born again, it's commanded of that, that born again believer to live be, that way. You're not going to be perfect. Ever. You, can, you can keep act, uh, accusing me of that, but that's not my testimony. You think you're perfect? In Christ, I do, yeah. What? Why is that a foreign concept to you? Christ. See, I don't know what that means. That yeah, I get happy you. over victory. Wait, that means you're never going to make any mistakes, is what you're saying. So sin is not a mistake. Sin is a failure to follow God and obey Him in time of temptation. A mistake is like forgetting to tie your shoe or forgetting to cut the oven off. Okay, okay. That's a mistake. So you're saying you're never going to sin again? I don't have to. I don't plan to. And you don't plan as, to. As of right now, I'm not going to sin. Because Jesus says to not worry about tomorrow. But you don't plan to. I don't plan to, absolutely. But and when really, temptation comes, I'm going to resist it by the grace of God. I know, I mean, he doesn't want to live holy. You don't want to live holy. It's so simple to get. I'm the problem. No, I'm not calling you the problem. I'm just saying you're not listening. You don't get it, bro. That's fine. I don't think you get it, though. No, biblical perfection is not the wrong thing to worry about. If you're not living holy, you're going to hell, man. You gotta repent. No, you gotta repent today. You may not have later. If you're not living holy. If you're not living holy, the Bible says without holiness, no man will see the Lord. See, that's different. See, see, that's... So what does it mean to be holy then? Without holiness. Holiness, what is holiness? That's, that's a different kind of to say you're not living holy. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Yes, it is. See, see. What does it mean to be holy for your heavenly Father is holy? You can't, you can't say the Bible says without holiness and then you say you're not living holy. You can't, like, that's too Well, you can't say that you can't live holy because you haven't even shown no, me Bible verses about I that. I can only repeat what the Bible says. Well, okay, can you show I me the verse? I can't. Can you show me the verse? No, you're saying. You can't show me the verse? You're taking your own logic. My own logic? Yes, I'm, just, I'm just repeating the verse for what it no, says. No, no, you didn't repeat the verse. You're yes, saying, I did. You're not living homeless, so you're not going to hell. Well, that, that's the conclusion you can get when you read that verse. No, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. Because if you're not living holy, you will not make heaven. The Bible says that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. But you just told him, if you're not living holy, you're not going to hell. Yes, absolutely. That does not mean the same as 
without holiness. Absolutely it is. Yes, it is. You can have Because if you're not going to see the Lord, what does it mean to be set apart from this world? You can have holiness. What, what does it mean to be set apart from this world? You can have holiness and I don't think you want to I don't I don't think you want to answer that question. All right, let's say what's what you mean. What does it mean to be set apart from this world? What does it mean to be set apart from this world? It means you're living in the spirit, you're living godly, and you're not following the god dang society's rules. You just said God's name in vain right there. I said god dang. That's still I mean, taking I his should... name in vain. You're not a Christian, man. You don't have the Spirit of God leading you to say that. I messed up. I, I shouldn't say that. I, I agree. Well, I agree. You messed, I messed up. up. You need to acknowledge that before God. I messed up. I, I agree. I'm not even going to say I didn't. I messed up. Sure. I shouldn't have said that. Okay. But, but you got to apologize to God. You can't I mean, if I said that I had the Spirit of God and I just said GD out of my mouth, I would be broken. I would be broken. I don't know how you're not broken for saying something like that. I messed up. I shouldn't. I'm not broken. Well, I don't I know if you even have the spirit. But you're judging my spirit. Like, you're something like... No, I'm judging your fruit. Jesus says you'll know a tree by their fruit. That's perfect. So I'm judging your fruit, your actions, what's coming out of your heart. Heart? We're Absolutely. We're having civil conversation, right? Say that one more time. We're having civil conversation. If I was an angry, bitter person, it would be a different conversation, right? Well, no, because... If you have bitterness in your heart, if you have sin in your heart, it's going to come out eventually. It will. Because Jesus says, out of the... Ab Go ahead. Yeah, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Has it come out? And if, has any, it can come out as blasphemies. Has it can any, come out has as profanities. Any, has any bitterness come out of my heart? Let's it doesn't have to be bitterness. Anything. Uh, what, what, yeah, what anything. Is? Yeah, so blasphemy came out of your heart. What was blasphemy? When he said GD. I'm not blaspheming God. Well, you did when you said that, yes. But there's nothing, but blasphemy is like you're like this. So how should God's name be used then? To just say flippantly? You're taking... I don't think you want to use. I don't. I don't think you want to use logic in this conversation, man. Bro, I, I'm. A, I know I'm born again. Let's no, I don't think you are. Maybe you have one point, but I don't think you are in right standing of God right I now. Am. I know I am, but I'm testing you. I think you've already been but tested. I, I think you're, I've seen your fruit. What's my fruit? What's my fruit? You just blaspheme God's name. You're a blasphemer. So I would. Uh, I would bet something tonight. It's not gonna go in your way. Tell me because you just said that. Because when you bless it with you, when you talk down on an actual child of God. I don't think you're an actual child of God. I know I am. Especially one who says they can't live holy. When I said, see, see, see. Are, if you, were actually, are you able to live holy? I never said that. But, are you able to live holy? How, see, that's how I know. Like this is this where I, this where I, this where I feel like you're. It feels like you're just a genius. So I never said that. So why would you? Why would you? Even, so, why would you right, right why, now why would you you're deflecting. Words? Right now you're deflecting. Why would you put words in my mouth? I never said you're that. You're deflecting right now, man. I never, I never said that. You're deflecting right now. Why would you put words in my mouth? I never said that. You need to turn to Jesus. You do. You need to turn to Jesus. I'm trying to get on the same page. I don't think we are on the same page. I feel like you're like you feel like you're like a moral high moral. No. That moral high standard that you're talking about, Jesus has commanded us to live perfect. And we can only do that by his strength. Bro, you're never gonna be perfect. Say that one more time. You're never gonna be perfect. I am in Christ. I am in Christ. He's saying that. I mean that that's your that's your accusation. Perfect means you're a God. No, perfect does not mean you're a God. What does it mean? It just means that you're living holy. You're living according to God's standards. And you'll never make a mistake. You will by Christ's strength. Christ never makes a mistake. Well, sin, again, is not a mistake. Sin is not a mistake. You know, I'm just going to keep preaching because we're going in circles, man. The Bible says that it's appointed once for man to die, and after this, the judgment. Jesus Christ, he wants you to repent of your sin because your sin will send you straight to the lake of fire. Your sin will be your enemy. Your sin is your enemy. And Satan is also your enemy. And the Bible says that those who are children of Satan will go to hell. And if you're living in sin, you're a child of Satan, the Bible says. 
you know, how much time do you actually have in this world? Oh, I'll get right tomorrow. You know, after I get drunk and, and slammed in this bar, I'll get right tomorrow. But what if that day never comes? Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Today, not tomorrow, not 10 weeks from now, not 10 years from now, not 100 years from now. You know, some people put their faith in their deathbed to be converted at that point. But you must put your faith in Christ today because he says there's urgency. He says there's urgency to get right with God today. You must get right with him today. And no born again believer will be led to the bar. Not to get drunk, not to hang around and have a good time with the boys. That's no truly born again believer's life. And anyone who shuns that, it's just simply deflecting. They're deflecting because they are convicted of their sin. And they can't imagine a righteous and holy God sending someone who is trying to be holy, someone who is trying to, to please God. No, he's not gonna he's not gonna tolerate that. He sets that moral perfection, that moral standard for all of us to live by. And he says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you don't go through him, there is no life outside of him. There is no life outside of Christ. There's only true life found in Christ. Many of you are striving to live for this world, but this world will chew you up and spit you out. If one of you gets in a diabetic coma in that bar tonight, the, the party will keep going on. It will keep going on. It won't slow down because you fell down. You'll just be another casualty of sin, the grip of sin. This world does not care. This world is selfish. Jesus Christ, he can give you a heart of purity. But my friends, don't you want godliness? Don't you want purity? Don't you want to be holy? Why is it such a foreign concept for a believer to live holy? Why is that a foreign concept? Jesus Christ, he wants you to repent today. So that way you can have true life. So that way you can have hope. Because ask yourself this, do I have hope in this life? Where does my hope come from? That's a question that you should ask yourself. Where does your hope come from? Oh, my hope comes from my kids. I'm gonna live through my kids because I was a failure in life. My hope comes in my job. My hope comes in the next Netflix series coming out so I can binge watch that. See, these are all temporal hopes and the Bible says that a hope that can be seen is not a hope. It's no hope at all. But Jesus Christ is that eternal hope. He's that firm and rock foundation. And you must come to know him today. That's what true hope is. That's what true hope is. Is that one, one day all things will be restored. So where we don't have to worry about this life and trying to make it something that it's never gonna be. You know what the gospel should do in a believer's heart? It should transform you. You shouldn't still be living in sin if you claim to be a follower of Christ. Shame on you if you claim to be a follower of Christ, yet bound by sin. Because that's not the testimony of what a believer should be living in or how a believer should be living. The gospel is meant to change you. And if you're not changed by the grace of God, you have a false grace, you have a false gospel. And the true gospel of Christ will transform a believer 
And you may have heard the true gospel before, but you're not allowing it to transform you because God will not force you. But he is wooing, he is chasing, and he has open arms for every one of you. But the sad reality is that so many are distracted by the things of this world. You know, Satan is a mastermind deceiver. He's a mastermind at making all of these worldly things seem like priorities compared to salvation. Where, oh, I gotta get drunk tonight, I gotta get high tonight, I gotta sleep around tonight, and then I'll get right with God. But don't you know that Satan is out to seal the deal, to seal your fate? Don't you know that he's out to condemn you? Don't you know he's out to destroy you? But you must understand that God, he has open arms today, and his heart is that you would be saved. His heart is that you would be rescued from your sin, and that you would turn. Because one day, you'll hear this preacher's voice on your deathbed, you'll hear this preacher's voice, when you stand before God, when you say, when you try to give all these flimsy excuses to God, oh God, I didn't know. Oh God, I, didn't, I never heard, I never heard your word. But he'll bring it back to your remembrance. You'll have a perfect memory on the day of judgment with how you live this life because the Bible says you'll be judged for every work, every evil work that you've done. It'll be brought up against you on the day of judgment. Every mock, Every scoff, every lie, every act that you've done, every thought, every word, every, every single thing will be brought against you on the day of judgment. It's kind of like a murderer who knows... I don't want to shake your hand, man. No, I don't. But it's like a murderer who stands before a judge in the court of law. And he has all of these, all of this evidence stacked up against him all of these evil works that he's done and he just knows that he's going to be sent to prison and that's what you'll stand like before God you'll have all of these you see this is the result of sin right here where the party just keeps going on the party just keeps going on you pass out this world does not stop for you but that's how you'll be on the day of judgment. You'll have all of these, all of these fines against you, all of these sins against you on the day of judgment. And you'll know, you won't even beg for mercy because you know that God is just. You, you'll know that God is right for what he's about to do. You'll be, you'll have a flashback of all of the times you had to get right before God. You'll be like, oh, yeah, God is righteous to do this because I had my turn. I had all of these chances, all of these opportunities that I threw away just to get drunk, just to get drunk, just to sleep around. And you'll hate yourself. You won't hate God on the day of judgment. You'll hate yourself because you did it to yourself. You'll bring yourself to hell and you'll hate yourself in hell. You'll, you'll have an evangelist heart if you die tonight in the, in, and you go to hell. Because you'll instantly think about how terrible this place is and how you don't want anyone to go there. And you'll die to just speak to your family to warn them. Oh, it was all real. Oh, the atheist will no longer be an atheist on the day of judgment. The second he takes his last breath, he'll no longer be a, an atheist. He'll stand in such eternal regrets. Oh, I should have gotten right before God. God, let me just warn my family not to come to this place. Please. You'll be speaking to a brick wall in hell because God will not hear you. He will not hear your prayers in hell. You won't even try to pray to God because you know your eternity is, is sealed. But that's why there's hope today. You do not have to let your eternal fate become a reality today. You could come to the cross today. You see, the sad reality is that many come to the cross, but they don't want to exchange their lives for Christ. 
They come to the foot of the cross. They see that Christ has given up everything for them. But they won't want to give up everything for, for Jesus. And that's where many people go wrong. Not on God's part, but on your part. Because you see that God was so willing to die. But you almost want to hold on to everything that he wants to deliver you from. Because you see that it's much more worth living for this world than for God. That, that's what people think. They think that it's much more worth it to live for this world that is passing away than to live for God. And how sad that is. The reality there. It's even more sad that many are on this road where they can hear the gospel preached to them faithfully every single day, but they won't do anything with it. You don't do anything with the gospel. And you know, America is going to be judged more harsh than a, than a nation that hasn't heard the gospel with such abundance, with such outcries from God's servants. You know, there's such a, a state of apathy in America where many don't see their need for Jesus because they think they have him already. They go to church every Sunday, worshiping a God they know nothing about. They praise a God with unholy hands. But the life of a believer is set apart from this world. The life of a believer doesn't do the things of this world. A life of a believer doesn't live in sin. But if you have the majority telling you otherwise, Jesus says, take heed that no man deceive you. So you best believe if the majority is telling you that you can live in sin and still go to heaven, you best believe that that's a false gospel. And that many are going to hell because of this gospel, this false gospel. But Jesus Christ, he wants you to repent today. He wants you to come to him today. He says, seek the Lord while he still can be found. You know, Jesus can definitely be found today. But when you take your last breath, he will no, no longer be able to be found. But that's why you must not harden your heart if you hear the voice of God tugging on your heart. Don't harden your heart because God is wanting you to repent today. But if you say tomorrow, or if you say on your deathbed, that time may not come. Because I guarantee you, none of you have on your calendar when you're gonna take your last breath. I know I don't, but my, my life belongs in the hands of my Savior. So I don't fear death. But I know every one of you, apart from Christ, does fear death. You fear death. And you know, Jesus Christ, he removes that stinger of death. Just like a person who has an allergic reaction to bee stings, if you remove the bee stinger, there's no need to be scared of, of bees anymore. And that's what Jesus does with death. You may be afraid of death today, but Jesus can re remove that fear of death today if you give up your life for him. But you must come to him. Don't just go to church every Sunday faithfully saying amen, hallelujah, but you're still living in sin. You're still cursing God with your lips. You're still blaspheming God, saying GD or, or JC. God's, God's name is not meant to be used as a curse word. It's not meant to be used as a swear word or as blasphemy. You must honor God. And only those who truly honor God will find pleasure in his sight. And the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. You know, I've always marveled at people who just... Can you read that? Yes, Matthew 7, 1 through 5 talks about hypocritical judgment. And I've already moved the beam out of my own eye, sir. And I'm not going to dialogue with you again. Because you have no ears to hear. May Jesus give you ears to hear and a heart to receive the truth. May he open your heart to the truth. Because the Bible says that it's not wrong to judge. It tells us how to judge. And only a spiritual man who has pulled a beam out of his own eye can see clearly to pull the speck out of his brother's eye. And that's what we're doing today. God has given us eyes to see. And we see the sin by your fruit. Are you better than anybody else here? 
I'm better off. I'm not better than. Are you better than anybody else? I'm not better than. I've already said that. Are you better than anybody else? See, I'm not going down that road with We're you able. again. We're able. Jesus Christ says there's two paths, though. The wicked are going to hell, and the righteous aren't. And what path are you on today? What path will actually give you eternal pleasure? Because all of us know that the path that leads to hell will not give you eternal pleasure, but rather eternal torment. And you don't have to go down that path. You don't have to go down that path. You can turn around tonight. You don't have to drunk, get drunk tonight. You can turn around today and get right with the Lord. You can humble yourself. You see, the Lord is near those who humble themselves who come to him in childlike humility. That's why it seems so foolish to the world because the world is all about, oh, look at me. Look how wise I can sound. And... But Jesus Christ, he has hidden the simple things of God. He's hidden the things of God from the wise and prudent and made them known to babes. Go get right with Jesus. Go get right with Jesus because you may not have tomorrow. You must see the urgency. It's so sad that people don't see the urgency. You know, I would have loved to have seen a preacher out on the street when I was in sin. But I thank God that he's using me now. He's using all of my brothers and sisters here now to call out to you. And Jesus Christ, he wants you to surrender all. Your so-called friends who are leading you into sin are not your friends. You see, someone who tells you the truth, someone who is wanting the best for you is your true friend. And that's what a, what a born again believer is to their neighbor because God says to love your neighbor as yourself. And I know if there is any sin in my life, I would want a brother or sister to tell me if they, if they saw that and I didn't. And that's what we're doing to you today because we see that your sin is gonna send you to hell. It's all fun and games today. But as soon as a catastrophic event takes place, As soon as something catastrophic takes place, that's when people want to humble themselves. You see, people don't see their need for, for Jesus. People who are living in sin, who are on this path that leads to eternal hell, don't see their, their need for Jesus until they see themselves in truth. You must see yourself in truth today. Do you see yourself in truth today? Do you see that you're standing in, in condemnation before God today? The Bible says if you love Jesus, you'll obey him. Are you fully obeying God? Are you obeying God? It's so sad that many will be the first to claim that they love Jesus. But they, they truly don't understand what it means to love Jesus. If you truly love Jesus... He says that if you love me, you'll obey me. You'll keep my commandments. You won't, you won't break the boundaries of a godly marriage if you truly love your husband or your wife. So why would you do it with God? Why would you do it with God? I'll turn to Jesus today. Realizing that you're going to die one day. You're living your life as if, there, as if there's no judgment. You're living your life as if you're not going to have to give an account for every work and deed that you do. <laughs> I'm not a princess. After you die, there's a point of judgment for you. And God is going to judge your life depending on what you do. Many are, out, of you out here are seeking, you're seeking fun, you're seeking to have the pleasures of sin. Can I give you something? Well, the pleasures of sin are but for a season. That's oh, hear me, please. Right here. God is, yeah. is going to come I'm back. He's going to take vengeance on those man? that do not obey the gospel. 
fornicator has not called you to be sexually immoral. This is not the, the life that God has called you to live. He's called you to be holy. The Bible says without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You have to be holy. You see, the, the enemy, the devil, has tempted you and is prevailing in your life. And right now, as you're living, you're actually opposing yourself. You're, you know in your mind what you're doing is wrong. Some of you, if you haven't seared your conscience, you know in your mind what you're doing is wrong and that you shouldn't be out here. Deep down, some of you do. But yet you're still out here wandering around in the darkness, grasping after the wind. You're not going to find what you're seeking out, out here, friend. You need to humble yourself. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You have to humble yourself as a little child. You've sinned against God. You've broken his commands. You've lied. You've stolen. If you blasphemed, lusted after women or men, Jesus calls you an adulterer at heart. Save, man. These are the, these are the commandments yeah, of God. Yeah, and right. they show he's that you're not a good person. Because good people don't lie, he's don't steal, right don't right lust now. after other yeah, people, <laughs> and don't uh, blaspheme the name of God. You're not a good person if you've done these things. So you need the forgiveness. You need the mercy of Jesus Christ tonight in your life. And he's the only one that can cleanse you from your sin. Because you're not cleansed. You may have been baptized, but if you if you never repented and gave your life to Christ, it's not worth you just came it. up a wet sinner. Turn to Jesus. It doesn't do you any good. I had a young lady out here tonight yeah, show me a Jesus you? tattoo on her, on her arm, What's that? but yet don't hold it was still in uncleanness. We it's in, not going to uh, do you any good. House. You know, Jesus okay. is going to say to those, he's going to say to many that are going to come to him saying, Lord, Lord. Yes. Have we not Are you living holy prophesied now? in thy name, oh, cast out devils to. in thy name, and I mean, done many wonderful sin, works in thy name? And he's going to profess unto them, you know? depart from me. Yeah, you know you don't have I never knew you. You you that work iniquity. That's true. I mean, every man sins. Not necessarily. He's going to say, oh yeah, I know you. man does sin because God makes a way of escape with every sin. Who's going to baptize in my name? So I know you. He's not going to say that. He's going to say, I never knew you. Right, right. So you, there's people that have never known Jesus. They've never been free from sin. They've never been cleansed. For a believer but yet they, time they, they profess with their mouths. Uh, he'll and they honor him with their lips. But, but their hearts are far from him. Don't want to do that. Is that you tonight? Yeah. Is your heart far from God? Really, it's not God that makes it impossible to get through him. It's you can't mock God. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. If you reap, you yeah, sow to the flesh. If you sow to please your flesh, you're going to reap destruction. But if you sow to the Spirit, you'll reap everlasting life. That's what God has desired for you, is that you would have everlasting life. He's not willing for you to perish. God is not willing for you to perish out here tonight. The devil is wanting you to perish. He wants you to, to die in your sin and go to hell. Oh, he would, he would, he would love that for you to go in there, one of these bars, get drunk, pass out. He would love you to overdose on drugs. He would, the devil would love that. Because Jesus says the thief comes not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But he is coming. That we might it have life and have it more but is urgent. Oh my friends, you must turn to Jesus Christ you today. His today. You, you must turn to him heart. tonight. Yeah. He turn says repent, he has open arms, turn from your you know, sins. Uh, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. His the arms are always of wide sin open, but one is day death. they're not gonna be on the day. Your sin is so serious in God's eyes that he's gonna pay you with death for it. That should cause you to wake up. You're not gonna hate God, you're not gonna point the finger at him. Your sin is serious, it's not something to trivialize, it's not something to justify. Opportunities to get right with them. Oh, you need to repent. Live in their sin your sin instead. is going to cost you so everything. There's really some urgency. Your soul is on the line tonight. Does that make sense? Your soul yeah, is on the line. So and you continue you to walk by as if it doesn't matter. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You continue to walk, walk you know, by as if your God, life is going to be forever. The word, your life is but a vapor. Your life like is but a vapor said, out here tonight. Is a vapor. Just as you you've ever seen smoke a, a cigarette or, or, or some of you probably yeah. vape. Yeah, just yeah, that smoke yeah, is smoke yeah, is like your yeah, life before God. Yeah, yeah, and one day you're going to have to give an account. Joe, 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 there's fear yeah, trembling yeah, in my heart for you. Knowing that you're not right with God. Knowing that you're going to have to give an account. Oh, humble yourselves tonight as a child. Give your life to the Lord. He's worthy. Turn to Jesus. You're not worthy to rule your own life. Sin's not worth it. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. You need to humble yourself. Turn to Jesus. Because all that pride will get you is condemnation. Turn to Jesus. All that pride will get you is judgment in the end. Oh, don't be proud in the eyes of God. 
That's very foolish. You know, there's this generation, sadly, there's no fear of the Lord. There's no fear of the Lord in this, in this generation. That's right. But the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And you know, wisdom and fear of the Lord are, are hand in hand. If, if you fear the Lord, the Bible says you have the beginning of wisdom. But if you don't fear the Lord, you're not wise. And that explains why we see all the sin in this world that is abounding. The Bible says in the last days, sin will be abounding. And things will be, will be abounding and the love of men will grow cold. cold. Because of things in this world. Turn to Jesus. And there's surely a thing will be abounding tonight. Hell's not worth it. We have all types of um, perversion going around, going out, around. Women dressing like they have no sense of what, what clothing is. This is foolishness before God. This is absolute foolishness. You need to repent. You need to humble yourself in, in the sight of the Lord and lift lift up your, your eyes towards heaven cry out to God that you might have mercy. Oh, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord that he might lift you up. You know, it's a mercy that God is even willing to reason with the sinner because all a sinner deserves is hell, nothing more. But yet God is willing. Not only is willing, he's desiring. He's desiring for you to be reconciled. God is not willing that any should perish. Praise God. He's not willing that any, any should perish. Not even one. Not even one person. Jesus is not willing that not even one person should perish. But sadly, so many are going to perish. Because broad is the, is the road and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many are, are on it. Because difficult is the way that leads to life. And few will be that find it. Oh, it's a difficult road that leads to life. You have to crucify the flesh. You have to die to those pleasures. You have to humble yourself before God. Many people don't want to be humble. Many people want to be proud. They want to... They will not have God to rule over them. It's very foolish because God is going to say to you, to those who will not have you, have Him to rule over, over them, He's going to he, He's going to say, "Come and bring those before Me who will not have Me to rule over them and slay them before Me." Oh, friends, you face a terrifying fate. You face a terrifying fate if you don't know Jesus. If you die without Jesus, if you die in your sin, you face a terrifying eternity separated from the living God. Oh, that's not God's will for you. Jesus Christ died on the cross that you might be reconciled. And how will you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? How will you escape if you neglect what Jesus did for you on the cross? And how dare you, Christian, who are out here saying that, I, oh, I, I know Jesus. Well, Jesus says, he says this, if you love me, keep my commandments. So tell me, how are you loving Jesus but not by not keeping his commandments? The Bible says you're a liar and the truth is not in you. You don't know Jesus. You don't love him. You need to forsake your sin. Humble yourself in the sight of the living God. God commands all men to repent everywhere. If he requires that too, that's why I said turn to Jesus. You have to repent. Yeah. It's, no, it's not an option. You have to turn from your sin. Turn to Jesus. You have to turn from your drunkenness. You have to turn from your idolatry. You have to turn from your weed smoking, pot smoking. You have to turn from your lust. You have to turn from pornography. All these things you have to turn from. Don't continue in these things. They'll, they'll, they'll lead to the end of your soul. They'll lead to the demise of your soul if you continue in these things. And that's not God's will for you. He's wanting you to repent, to humble yourself. The Bible says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. And though there may, there may be an end to your life that may seem right, the path that you're going on right now may seem correct. But if it's not the, the path that God has put in, in place for you, you're going down the wrong path. You're going down the the path of death and it may seem that it's the right path it may seem that it's you're doing good for yourself you may be going to school and you're trying to make a name for yourself but what does that really matter you know jesus says if, if you were to if you were to gain this whole world if you were to become a millionaire a billionaire and, and become super successful super famous what would that profit you it would profit you nothing the, the bible says this world is passing away the same, the thing, whatever is in, whatever is new today, tomorrow is forgotten about. It's old. You know, you can you can probably go to, into a store and find a bunch of artifacts, 
and relics or a museum and find a bunch of artifacts and relics that that one day uh, at one point in time people were were you know praising these things and saying whoa look at these great uh buildings look at these great artifacts that we have and now they're, they're just in a museum collecting dust well that's that the bible says the glory of man is fading it's like a fading flower so you may be in the know now you may be popular now but the bible says the memory of the wicked will perish so if you continue in your wickedness no matter how big you are you can become a, a superstar in this world a famous hollywood actress but if you don't know jesus christ you're gonna you're gonna perish in the grave and you're gonna be forgotten your, your memory will be no more so i won't shut up i'll keep preaching the gospel that i'm commanded i don't obey you i obey jesus christ and he tells me to preach the gospel to every creature that all might be saved because i love your soul and jesus christ loves you more but the question is do you love god that's the problem do you love god many of you don't love god and you think you do but there's a delusion there loving jesus is about is, is about keeping his commands and, and if you truly love him you'll obey him if you truly love god you'll obey him oh hear me god says he's not willing that any of you should perish jesus loves you he's not wanting you to die but the question is do you love jesus because yes jesus may love you at the cross but if you don't love jesus god will send sinners to hell god is, is people want to think that well god loves me so he's, he's not going to send me to hell right he sure will if you continue in your sin he sure will does he take pleasure in that no he doesn't but he sure will do it because god is just god is just no don't don't throw up the devil home the devil hates you man that's the most foolish thing that you can do is throw up devil horns. The devil hates you. You prove how foolish you are when you worship the creature rather than the creator. The devil hates you. He wants to see your destruction. But Jesus Christ loves you. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be cleansed. He wants you to be washed and purified. Oh, he, he doesn't want you to perish in your sin. He doesn't want Turn you to, to perish in your sin. Jesus Christ wants you to be free. Of Jesus. He Thank wants you to be so and saved, free from this world. Oh, friends, it's such a blessing to be in the Lord Jesus Christ, to have freedom from sin, freedom from the bondage of this world. That's, a, that's available to everyone. Because as you're out here tonight as a slave in your sin, you have to keep going after your lust. You're like, you, don't, you don't have any, any self-control without the Holy Spirit. Oh, but it's all available to you. Listen, these things are all available to you, and Jesus wants to give you these things. But you have to humble yourself. You have to come out in truth and humble yourself to Jesus Christ, and he will give you freedom and peace. Oh, come to the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon you. Yes, God will abundantly pardon you of your iniquity. God will abundantly pardon you from your sins. He will pardon as far as the east is from the west. He's so willing to do that. But are you willing? Are you willing to give up everything for Jesus? Are you willing to die? Thank you, sir. The Bible says you must be born again. Jesus says you must be born again. It's not an option. Young people, it's not an option. You must be born again. There's so, so many people in the church, they've never been born again. Some people, under the sound of my voice, may have gone to church, may have been born in the church, born and raised a Christian, they say. But they never knew Jesus. He'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Oh, don't let it be you tonight. Don't let that be you tonight. Please don't let that be you tonight, young people. Don't let that be you that hear the name, hear the sound of Jesus saying, depart from me, because you never departed from your sin. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from iniquity. Men leave sin over the fear of the Lord. Don't stay in it. And, and that conviction that you feel in your heart, that's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit comes to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Because there's a coming judgment over that sin in your heart. There's a coming judgment over the sin that you committed in your life. That lying you did in, in, in the past, you may think, oh, I, that was years ago. God still has it down on, on his books. 
God still has all the stealing down on, on the books. It doesn't matter how young you were. If you if you do that, it, you shouldn't have done it. It was it, you're at the age of accountability. It's a, it's on your account. And God is just. He is holy and He is righteous. He will let no He, he will by no means clear the guilty. God is not going to overlook your sin because you did good works. He's not going to overlook your sin because you were baptized. The only way you can be cleansed of that sin and forgiven and have the mercy of God is what through Jesus Christ did on the cross. It's the only way. It's the only way that was the atonement for that sin. Because when Jesus was on the cross and, and suffering, endure, enduring that, that the wretched cross, he was enduring that suffering for you and my sake. And before he died, he said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. He perfectly fulfilled the law that you and I did not keep. He perfectly fulfilled it. And he died and he was buried and he rose again. No other man is risen. Only Jesus Christ. He rose again. And that's it signified that God the Father accepted what he did on the cross. So he was accepted. What he did on the cross paid for it all. We are, we are justified in Christ. But the Bible says, those that name the name of Christ, let them depart from iniquity. If there's no departing, if you're, if you're naming the name of Christ and there's no departing from iniquity, you don't know him. The Bible says, let us declare what we have heard from him. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, but yet we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with him and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Oh, hear me, the, the blood of Jesus Christ, in order for it to cleanse you, you have to be walking in the light as he is in the light. You can't be walking in the darkness. Oh, don't be deceived. The enemy is trying to deceive you, trying to get you to think that, you know, you, you know, I heard someone say that in, in, in some type of song that I've, I've already overcome. You know, I used to, I used to have this, this idea that before I was actually saved that I had already overcome, but I didn't even understand what that meant. I didn't even know what that means, that I had already overcome. I was just parroting what I heard. He's still yeah, But no. this is what it we truly means to overcome. He's going to be one of those cases that I saw the before all that. He was in but Christ. I was asking, creature, is it good down there? It was. We died down a little bit. Because all becomes new. Back over here. So like when that, you become bro. in Christ, oh, you be, you're yeah, born yeah, again. Like you become a new creature. Because right now, as you are, when you're born into this world, and you chose to sin for that first time, you corrupted yourself. And your heart, at that moment, your heart was was corrupted. And it was, it was not clean before God. And you have to be purified. You have to be washed. And the only way for this to happen, for you to be washed and cleansed, you have to be, you have to turn to Lord Jesus Christ and be born again and humble yourself in faith, in faith in Him. That Jesus Christ is able to give you a new heart. He's able to, to give you the Holy Spirit, which is what you need. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have, you don't belong to Jesus. Yeah, like I said, someone called. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to Jesus. How do you know that you have the Holy Spirit? You're walking holy. You're living apart from sin. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're actually going to be living holy. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be living holy. This is the, the, the greatest test. The Bible says, let us examine ourselves. See whether or not we're in the faith or whether we're reprobate. You need to examine yourself, self-examination. You know? Oh, no, this mic's not public. You can talk to my brother, though. Oh, turn to Jesus today. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves. Seek the Lord while he may be found. You call upon him while he is there. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Because your thoughts, if, if you're not in the Lord, your thoughts are wicked. You have wicked thoughts. The Bible says, the thought of foolishness is sin. So if you devise foolish foolish plans in your mind, that's sin. Humble yourself. Light of God. Humble yourself. Don't go out here tonight trying to get more of a pleasure of sin. Jesus, forsake your sin. Run to Jesus. Run to Him. Run to him. The Bible says, flee. 
free from all sin because of Jesus. Because he is, he's worthy. He's worthy of your worship. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of all these things. You push me. But will you continue in, in apathy? Will you continue in rebellion? We're not going to profit you again. What would, what would it profit you? If you would, if you would gain this whole world, if you would gain this, just this Broadway street over here. Let's just say someone said, okay, I'm going to give you this whole, this whole uh, parkway. I'm going to give you this whole street. It's going to be yours. You're going to own it all. All these buildings around here, it's going to be yours. But they said, it's all for the price of just your soul. I'll give you all these buildings. You would, you would turn that down. Someone said, I'll give you the whole world. Just, for, just give me your soul. That's what, that's what the, the, the devil is, is able to offer. He's able to offer you things in this world, pleasures of, of this, this life. But Jesus says, what would it profit you to gain these things and lose your eternal soul? It's sad to say so many of you are selling out for much less than that. I'm sad to say so many of you are selling out for, for much less. But Jesus is worthy of it all. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of all worship, all honor, and all glory. Humble yourselves tonight. I'm used to doing permits. He usually does the one here. And I always get like I get permits in for a Charter Columbus. And like it's and I was I was told no, just throw it in there. He's got it. Yeah, and I mean that's great that you took the extra effort to send it off to Lieutenant Chambers, but it has to be submitted 14 days before the day of the event because the lieutenant actually has to get chief of police to authorize it. That's how it is in most cities. Yeah, exactly. And, and like I said, we're we're very very lenient on it. Oh no, I know mean, you guys are trying to do great work out here. I mean, my hats off to you. That's great. But at the same time, if someone makes a complaint. Can't have hey, I totally sales. understand. Because so, for like for previous times, like I never, I'm not. Done that. Yeah. I know, and I feel like I've seen you. Yeah. I was just curious. Well, like I said, you saw us. You've seen us all tonight. Yeah, I've seen you. Uh, yeah, generally, we don't come over and. You're you know, no, you're fine. Okay, no, you're, you're doing your job. I'm not. I'm not offended yeah, at all. You guys got to do your job. I'm not. Just don't do it. You're doing your job. I'm not. No one's ever explained. That's what the policy is. 14 days before the day of the event. And if you get the permit and have it with you so place that you have this circumstance again, we can show the officer, hey, we have a permit. Oh, yeah. That's, so that's how I do in most cities. Yeah, if you had your permit, I'd say you guys are good to go. I understand. So, how, long, how late are you guys planning on Well, you I mean, I don't know. We didn't really have a plan. Yeah. Just whatever. Like I said, it was just... We just need to shut down the amp. Yeah, the amp. That's a big thing. I mean, you should have the right maybe. to be out here. First Amendment. Uh, but at the same time, there's no amp like that. Yeah. Unless you have a permit. Got it. No problem. We will. All right. Get your ID back to okay. I'm not wanted. No, no, we just, it's just, the reason we do that no, is just so we have a record of who we spoke to. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> yeah. No, this is nothing new to me. I've been I got doing you. this kind of work for just over eight years. Oh, wow. Okay. I've been all over, so it's still totally understandable. All right. all right. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate yeah, no, your cooperation. No Thank all right. you. Good luck to you guys. Yeah. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. All right. We'll Thank see you. you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Good night. Good too. If you live to be 100, if you want to stand, you got to stand between the like, Do you have his number? You don't need a response back. You're like, no, Brother, I'm probably throwing the same thing. The only problem that I have, I feel like you're being judgmental. Well, you Hopefully are too. Judgmental. That's the only problem that I have. You are too, when I, when I walked up, I just, I just felt like I just saw a judgmental presence. If they come back, can I like show them that at least? I guess. I'd be in Luke 23. Hey, well, he's not going. I can, I can meet y'all there. It's also in Luke. He's, I mean, he's. It's also in Luke. Right. Yeah, Luke 23. He, 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 he's asking questions, but he wants to know where repentance is, so I'm going to give it to him. But yeah. I don't know where. Hey, you know what? Let me shake your hand. I really appreciate what y'all are doing. That's amazing that y'all have, have the audacity to come ahead and do that. I appreciate that, bro. I'm telling you. Thank you for what you do. Appreciate it, man. I, I really, Have a good night, bro. Really, what are you looking for, bro? That guy right there. I'm looking for... That uh, guy is clear, uh, he's clearly uh, drunk. Is, um, Brother, he loves God. Either yeah, he's going to yeah. hell. No, no, no. In the days of Jonah, like repentance. 37. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, 
Even oh. Jonah repented. Yeah. Matthew 24, 37, you said? I thought you were talking about that this generation shall be like. The sign of Jonah. No, the sign of oh, Jonah, okay. repentance. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take you through that. What, what, are we, what are we trying to look up? I'm just trying to define repentance for him. Oh, I got a whole slew of scriptures already. Oh, yeah, I know that, but I, I want to use it. That's 1239, 42. The thing is, it's like. We feel like we're enemies here. 12, and we're all on the same team. No, we're not on the same team. We're on the same team, bro, if you're still Definitely sinning. Definitely not. Yeah. I own the same team. Hey, come here. Let me, see, fact, let me show you something. You can read 1 John chapter 3, and you'll I see we're not on the same team. A guy that loves God while uh, his heart. He just doesn't have ears. <laughs> you don't love him with all your heart. Hey, you're a sinner. Do you love your parents with all your heart? The Bible says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. If you're walking in sin every day, you're not doing that. You know, you know, I found the verse. So how do you know, based on this... The hour that I've been here, are you're you fruit. Are you a sinner? Doing you're fruit. Day? Are you a sinner? Do, do you love your parents? Are you a sinner? Do you love your parents? You don't want to answer that. Do you love your parents? You don't have ears to hear, man. He doesn't have ears. He's been here the whole. He's convicted. Right. What makes you? Because he can't walk what, away. What makes you a high And you're responding you wrong what, to the conviction that you have. Y'all hey, arrogant. So y'all. We have to shut down the That's speaker. a false accusation. Yeah, so you just sin. What, what, what makes? Even this time too. It was like let's check the logs. What makes you more? The only other time he hit me up. It appears that the days he requested have come and gone. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So how do you know that I'm walking in there? You don't know. You're a sinner. Are you a sinner? You assume. He's like, please. You told me that. No, you told me. I was what about the signature? If, Where's the no, signature? You told me I was walking in. first. I think no. you're moving. You assumed that. You already confessed. Plus, I overheard his conversation. Oh, I was tripping. Do you said so every day? I, like, I, I, I don't, heard. I don't. I mean, I don't even know. Like, hey, if you don't know, bro, whether or not you're sinning against God, bro. First of all, that's pretty bad. That's crazy. But like, what could I have done? Even done. Let me show Maybe call the numbers. All right, let's 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 look. Avoid that. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they were. Hinted at the preaching of Jonah, I would and just indeed like a greater Jonah is here. So now we have to go to the book of Jonah and find out what the men of Nineveh did after they heard the preaching of Jonah, okay? And then because that's what repentance is, it says that they repented of the preaching of Jonah, right? So now I'm going to take you. I'm going to listen. Yeah, I'm going to take you to Jonah, okay? It's very end of Jonah, so it's very easy, okay? So at verse 10, Jonah chapter 3, verse 10. Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God relented from them the disaster that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. So it's because that they turned from their sin, bro. Evil way Sin and evil way. You are a twister. You are a twister. He just said evil way. He said earlier, I asked him earlier. How can you say, it just clearly said they turned from the evil way. sin evil. I never sin evil. Alright, bro. What? Alright, bro. Brother, I, I, I got no more for you. I got no more for you, bro. I got no more. Hey, is keeping Jesus' commandments good? Yes. Which means not doing them is bad, right? I can't say that. Yeah, you can't. Okay, you can't. You can't. Come on, bro. How can you do it? Hey, come on. Hey, we're just. I'm gonna have to shut know. it down right yeah. there, bro. I mean, there's a, there's a, I can't give you any more, bro. If sin is not evil, I can't continue the conversation. So is a white lie evil? He already went through with this earlier, bro. All liars go to hell. Black lies are evil. There's a white lie. Evil. Blue lies are evil. A white lie is evil. Evil. 100. So you give me an example of a white lie. So you think a white lie is the same as someone murdering somebody in the middle of the street right now? This is a different question. I'm asking you. A white lie would be like. It's not the same. In my, the my, my, my wife my asking me. Come my on. wife asking me, does she look good in this dress? And I say yes, but really I'm saying not. Shame on you for lying to But I know that she likes that dress. You can say silent. That is the same as. Somebody pull the trigger. Hey, Bam! My hair. Hey, shame I tell on my you wife. She, I tell my wife she doesn't look good. I'm asking the question. I'm gonna say you look good. I don't like that dress. <laughs> can we ask the question? What is the Bible saying? Is say? that the same? The Bible says all liars will have their part. Is that the same? Bro, they pull the trigger on somebody the in the middle of the street. The What's the lie? Sense, bro. Is that the same? The Bible says murderers will end up in the lake of fire. The Bible says liars will end up in the lake of fire. Is that the same? The Bible says drunkards. They're all going to end up in the lake of fire. Is that a yes or no? They're all going to end up in the lake of fire according to the Bible. We're not going to give opinions. We're going to give Bible. Bible says liars are in the lake of fire. Okay, so like the Bible, you should be able to say yes or no. Liars, adulterers, fornicators, homosexuals, blasphemers. They're all going to be in the lake of fire. Is that a yes or no? I ask, Period. I ask y'all questions. They're if, going to be in the lake of fire. What don't fire, you understand what about that? Whether or not they're equal. They're both going to send you to the same place, well, and you're going to be in eternal sure torment for it. Well, well, the huh? Bible says You so. think God will send me to hell for telling my wife it's that not she, my she will... You shouldn't be lying. Stop lying to her. You do not you have think, to lie. Yeah, but I'm Every saying, but, but even if I do, I don't lie to my wife. Even if I do. Even if I 
I do. That's, that. that's, that's, my, that's, my, that's my that's my only sin. <laughs> is me telling my wife. If that is your only sin? Yes. That'll be the only sin that I'm going to I'm going to hell. And you will go to hell for it. Absolutely. That's not mine. That's not my that's not our opinion, bro. Get mad at John for saying that in Revelation, bro. You're just playing with fire. No, get mad at Jesus, bro, for saying that. I know. Get mad at Jesus. We'll see. Get mad at Paul. I don't know. I can't. I can't. Get mad at Peter. I love God all month, but I can't. I, Peter, Peter, hey, we'll see. What, I mean, I'm a, you might be true. When Peter denied I'm Jesus not, three I'm, times, he knew where he was going. What's that? When Peter denied Je Jesus three times, what? he knew where he was going. Denying Jesus and telling my wife she looks good in a dress, hey, and I think she doesn't. You, when you tell your wife a lie like that, you are denying Jesus. I wouldn't tell my wife that she looks good in a dress she doesn't look good in. When you tell your wife that she looks good when she does it, you're denying Jesus. But if I do it with the intention of making her feel good. Bro, that's that's, just, that, bro, that's not good. That's, that's even worse, bro. That's like, even I'm worse. Saying, I'd rather be real with my wife. Is that hell worthy? I've been, I've been married 18 years. And I was like, be hell worthy. My wife no, appreciates my honesty. Here's the issue, bro. Here's the issue, bro. It's not that God's too, too, too judgmental. It's the fact that you don't understand the magnitude of what sin is, bro. Right. Sin is so big, bro, but really it's not. In a Christian's life, really God shows what sin really is, which is really small to a born-again Christian. But to you, bro, you can overcome sin because it's, you don't understand the magnitude of which it is. And so you're belittling sin like lying, and you're saying, ah, well, 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 white lie. And that, that's not going to be a good excuse for you, bro. You think I'll stay, I'll stay the same? Like, bro, no. I just, we just, we just answered this question, bro. All sin is not the same in earthly sense, but it'll all send you to hell. So you think... All whole sin is going to send you to hell. Yeah, willful sin will send you to hell. Absolutely, 100%. And that's not that's not, that's not not my promise. It's a promise from God. So where's that? Where I didn't say scripture on that. Hebrews 10, 26. Keep it up. All sin will send you to hell. Hebrews 10, 26. Come on, hold on. <laughs> Oh, you know, I'm about to do the Hebrew life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He got cut. There's no way that can be true. Confounded. It can't yeah, be true. A, there's a sin that doesn't lead to death. Willful sin leads you to hell. First it time. can't be true. Not all. all. Maybe, maybe like general, in general, but bro, what willful sin can you list? Like, can you I'm, you're, you're, hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, hang on, no way. I'm about to ask you a question. Me my wife. I'm about to ask you a question. She looks good in a dress, and I don't think she looks. Do you lie to your wife? Do you lie to your wife? Do I lie to your wife? Don't lie to your wife. Not, you don't lie to your wife, bro. If I do it, it's because I feel like no. she it will. You hate your wife if you lie to her. I'd rather be quiet than lie to my wife. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's for if I do it, it's because I'm trying to avoid a argument or kind of oh, like man. I'm done it. You gotta leave the home, man. Why is she arguing with you for telling you the truth, bro? Huh? Why is she arguing with you if you're telling her the I truth? I want to say the scripture on all, oh, we say all, oh, we say all oh, lies. All liars, real All oh, willful sin. sin. Yeah, all oh, the, the sin. The Bible doesn't say verbatim oh, all willful sin. To him who knows to do good and doesn't but do it to him. But the Bible says if you will. It's 417. Yeah. Fair enough. And I showed him that scripture, but, but he, then he I said, but then he said, to do good. And then, and but then, then he said, it only said good. sin that's not unto death. That's not me. It's the scripture. That's the scripture. all the scriptures I've given you, bro. You want to hear it? You want to hear it? Revelation 21.8. 21, 21, 21, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's see. What's but, your context now? Oh. 21.8, I think I have context. All liar. This is after the day of judgment. Okay. It's a red so, letter, too. Jesus yeah. Saying. So it says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the ab abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars <laughs> shall have their part. That's right. <laughs> Shall have their part. Yeah, you, you, we're just messing with you. Bro, it's so clear, bro. Stop doing But it says all bro. liars. Hey, it'll be so much liars, easier bro. for you to say, you know what, Jaden, you're right. No, we're not it'll laughing so at the easier. fact that people are going to hell. I swear to God, we're the same. No, we're well, why would you swear thing, to God? I love Dude, you. don't swear to God, bro. Jesus said, don't Dude, swear. There's no way in your, like, you can't be rational and think. Rational. A person that's like, like telling his wife she looks good and good Take it is, a, is the same person that is like out that here. OMG. Hey, hey, brother, you got twenty dollars. I don't have any money on me. Can you give me twenty dollars? Like, bro, that's not that. the same. That's not the that. same time. Like, that's taking a lot. Like, bro, you, you're not arguing with us, that's bro. Your, that's your standard of sin. You're not arguing with us. No. Like, just because you, okay, if you, say, if you say something stupid, does that make you stupid? Wait, what'd you say? I'm sorry. If you say something, say something stupid. Does that make you stupid? If I say that something is stupid, does that no, make you stupid? No, if you say something stupid, does that make you stupid? I think sinning is stupid. Yeah, does that make you stupid? 
Yeah. It's not if you say one thing, if you say, like, say one thing, if you say one thing, if you say one thing that's stupid, does that make you stupid? If I say a stupid thing, does that make you stupid? No, I just said a stupid thing. So if you lie one time, does that make you a liar? Yes. It does, absolutely, because that's sin. What's the difference? That's sin. What's the difference? That's sin. But what's You're the comparing apples to oranges. Yeah. What is the difference between me saying a hey, one stupid thing being no. stupid no, and one lie being a lie? You're comparing a mistake to a choice. Having a lack of intelligence doesn't send you. You're comparing a mistake to a choice, my friend. Sin is a choice. Being stupid is, is, I mean, is a mistake. There's people that are smarter than others. You know? the I can say something stupid right now. Nobody goes to hell for being I, stupid. Exactly. Off of ignorance. That doesn't make me stupid. You can, you can do something, you can do something stupid minded. and not be stupid. I mean, sure, but you, but sin is not stupid. Sin is a choice that you make. It's not based on ignorance. It's, a stupid it's based on knowledge. Be, I mean, stupid can be sin. It's a stupid uh, I mean, choice, but. Sure, but sin is stupid. I'm, like, I'm not even trying to like. I'm not even like. I don't even want to be argumentative. Like, bro, you have I mean, argued everything that we said. But, no, but I feel like y'all y'all are judgmental. That's my problem. Wait, wait, hold, well, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is, that a is it wrong to be judgmental? If you judge fairly, no. That's what we're doing. Perfect. That's see, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think y'all are. Well, I feel, I feel like y'all are like a higher. Your that's your opinion. How are we judging fairly? I mean, I agree. It's my opinion. opinion. I feel like you, I, I like you a lot. Him, he, he called me. He said I was living in sin I, daily. He, I'm he, saying he's doing, he's doing, he's doing for an hour. Yeah, you say. told me that I was living in sin daily. I overheard your conversation with him. I never. What am I doing daily? That I don't know. Well, anyway, you, you confessed that you were a sinner to him. Come on, bro. Confessed that I was a sinner. Bro, to him. You, you're really you're doing jumping jacks, bro. I was a sinner. You're doing. You're doing, you're doing a lot of jumping jacks. Bro. I mean, I put everybody's a sinner. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. Man, the Bible calls us holy, peculiar Saints. people, yeah, rulers, and that off your experience. I got a blameless, perfect. I tried to be blameless. Pure. I tried to do my best. Well, if you have a pure heart, then you're blameless. I tried to be blameless, but Sanctified, I mean, sanctified, justified, trying, you just washed. Yourself. You can't try. Me, but you're human. You're not a fuck. You're not Honestly, a god. Well, I mean, that, that was it right there. There was it right there. What is it coming up? What is it coming up? He just, he just dropped an F bomb, bro. Oh, that's not a mistake. You're going to make a mistake. That shows us the here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The heart, the you can't speak. fathom being sin free because you haven't met Christ's power to make exactly. you sin free. Bro, Christ is with it. I wouldn't be impressed. No. Bro, how old are you? 43 this year. Do you think you're going to live the rest, the rest of your life without an A sin? That's possible, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, my plan. Awesome. I'm mean, sure play. Yeah, I can do all things through Christ. He's going to tell you the same thing that I'm going to tell you, bro. We're all going to say All of us. How do you know? You're going to you're, are sure. you God? You're going to? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 100% First of all, in order to live in the next 20 years, you have to make a Hold on, hold on. In order to know that, in order to know that, you would have to be God and you would have to be in Scripture. I have common sense and I know you're human. In the next, <laughs> oh my goodness, bro. Common sense, This bro. guy. You're going to go 20 years without any sense. This so guy. So you're going by man's philosophy. I can do all so things So basically, you're, you're Christ. Jesus Christ in the next 20 years. He Come lives on, in bro. me. Yes, he lives in me too. And we're supposed to be little Jesus's walking we're around. Trying to be how, hey. No, no, not trying. You're See, not that's where you're missing it. Hang on. What's no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, go ahead. The problem is he's trying. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's yeah. the problem. You're not doing. You're not, you're not doing. That's right. You gotta die to your trying. That's right. And let Christ do it in you and through you. Hey, if you try, you'll fail. If you if you live by the Spirit, yeah. the Bible says you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. But you keep trying in your own strength to not sin, and you're gonna fail every time. But you're gonna fall short. That's what that's that's what you say. That's not what the Bible says. You're going to. That's not okay. going to be an excuse. Well, I listen to today, Jesus bro. in the Bible. I, I don't listen you. to men who are sinners. So, so when he falls short, can he call me and be like, "Hey, man, TJ, you're right. I fell, I fell short." No, I'm not going to call you. I'm going to call Jesus if I fall short. But I'm saying, if you do in the next 20 years, can you come and be like, "Hey, TJ, you're right. I the fell Bible, short." This is what the Bible says. Yes. If, not when we sin. If. Because there's a possibility that we could sin, yeah. and there's a possibility that we won't sin. Yes. You're not God, and I'm not God. Yes. And the Bible says that we are called to be holy. Yes. Second Peter chapter one. Yes, sir. Second Peter chapter one says yes, we have access to the divine nature. I agree. I plan on staying in that divine 100%. nature. 100. But I'm saying, do you believe it's possible well, to next, not sin? It's possible. But there I'm we saying, go. within the next 20 years, that's all we need. If you, if you, that's if all you, we need. Yeah. If so, you sin, keep coming. What's, TJ, you know what's what? You're impossible right. with man. You're right. I sin. That's not the mind of Christ. All right, but you're right. going to. That's not the mind of Christ. Man, you know, you don't want to. You said I'm going to. You, I promise you. How do you know that? I know you. How do you know? But if you were not going to. Tell me how you know. Can you call me in the next 20 years? Tell me how you know. TJ, you're right. Tell me how you know. Brother, you're human. What does that mean? You're not a God. Jesus was human. 
He didn't sin. Jesus, he's pretty much God. I mean, he's like basically. He's God and human, but he yeah. he was tempted in all points without yes. sin. But you're not a God. He could have sinned. You are human. But God lives in all you. All men have, have sinned and failed. Hey, you have Paul, sinned. Hey, you know Paul, hang on. You know Paul dealt with that you're a human uh, nonsense yeah. in Romans 6? Romans 6. Nonsense. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah you're, you know, you can't blame your flesh anymore, bro. Oh, man, no you're, you're like you're like bro. one step away from believing the bro. truth. You been, you mean to tell I me mean, after being born again, the problem is, is you don't believe blood, what God can do the Holy in you. Spirit. I know what I mean, God. My I know that I have a choice to sin or not sin. So, but I might, but you're my human flesh may there overcome my will. There it is. There okay. It is. Bro, do you know what? But you're right? saying you're saying there's no chance. You know, I didn't say no chance. I said it's possible that you can sin. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. But you're saying it's a definite that you will see. That's a circle, That's man. Yeah. Can I give this to you? I'm breaking yes. Thank you. Are you living holy? Yes. So, I'll pass this on to the next person that needs it. I don't need it. I'm good. So you, you acknowledge that you don't need Jesus then? No, I need Jesus. Okay, so are you if living absolutely else holy? This hard more than I do because I know it's on this card. So can I ask you why you're dressed that way? I'm dressed like this? Yeah. Because I can. Well, I understand you can, but did the Holy Spirit lead you to dress that way? I don't think it's necessarily the Holy Spirit that led me to dress this way. The only thing that I need to know is that Jesus died for me on the cross, and he saved me from my sins, and I will be in heaven one day. So do you know who makes it to heaven? Yes, Christians. Well, those who are completely without that Jesus sin. Died on the cross for them. So that belief must turn into action. So if that belief doesn't turn into action, then it's vain. The belief does turn into action because whenever I see somebody that needs Jesus, I tell them Jesus loves them. It's every it's, Jesus calls everybody into a different calling than each person. Like I might be called to be a missionary in Argentina. Or I might be called to tell a random man on the street, or a random woman on the street, that Jesus loves them, and that's all they okay. need. So can I ask you this? Ask you. What does it mean to be born again? To be born again? Yeah. To believe that Jesus died on the cross for you, so that you can go to heaven, and that you can... So, so to be born again is to be baptized, so that you can go to heaven, and you believe that God died on the cross for you and your sins, so that you can go to heaven and rejoin Him. So that's not what it means to be born again. When someone is born again, you don't have the spirit of Christ. It's evident. I Man, it's evident. I Man, she came in the spirit of pride right there too. The Jesus of the Bible. I know Jesus of the Bible. Jesus of the Bible. Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible knows that these people. Jesus of the Bible wouldn't go into a sky bar and sin the sky bar with people. He wouldn't. Because the Jesus. Oh. Because the Jesus that I know would. Well, Jesus said many false Christ shall arise in the last days. Jesus also was not the one with the holier-than-thou Christians hanging out with them. That's not who he hung out with. I don't know if you guys know that. So he, he hung out with people and made disciples of everybody. He never sinned with sinners, though. I understand that. Right. I understand he that. He, always he made disciples of them. them. Right. He made so, disciples of them. So are you doing that? I am. I hope so, I am. Okay, so what are you out here for? I'm just out with my friends. I'm allowed yeah, to go. Right yeah, I'm allowed. Yeah, how, how about your rebuke for what she just said earlier? I'm allowed to, I don't have to rebuke her, it's not my job. Open, open it's not my job. You don't love her. I do love her. No, no, yes. no, okay, love well I do. Bible you guys are rebuke. you guys are preaching love. the wrong way. I, I, I get it and I well, understand can you show and scripture? I love Jesus. Because you said you're like making disciples. Can you show us scripture? I'm just out with my friends. We just No, went no, out. I understand that, but can you show me scripture? Because that's what matters. What? Scripture about what? About us doing it the wrong way. I just think that you're you're targeting people. I don't think you're gonna show me scripture. I'm not show I'm not gonna show you scripture, but I'm just saying. Yeah, that because you can't. But I can't like off the top of my head. I just don't know it like that. Okay, I understand, but. But do you know you, it like that? I, I know some scriptures. Yeah. Okay, well, and you're and you're probably taking it out of context. Like, like what? Everything's everything's I mean, in now, context. I mean, now you're basing all no, of I'm these. Not, off. I'm just saying that you guys are you guys are villainizing these people. How are we? And I'm just, we're not antagonists. You are. 
No, we're not. Turn your sign around. So the Bible says that actually. Hell awaits. It does. Fiery, oh, it does await. It does await these people. A fiery hell. You guys need to know the Bible go to hell. because these in the Bible, go to hell. listen, because Wait, in the Bible it doesn't even it doesn't It says for women to learn and silence. You guys are listening. It says women to learn and silence. Listen, women to learn. It doesn't even it doesn't even depict hell. It doesn't, hell. It doesn't depict hell as a fiery wasteland. Let's get him. Hell is just separated from You got two mouths on one ear. You got two mouths on one ear. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. You, you need to apply the Bible. You need to apply it. 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 You're reaching you people to the wrong them Jesus. With kindness, not well, are you with doing fear. that to us? Are you doing you're, that to us? You're not doing are you it practicing to me. what you I'm, preach? I came up here are you to practicing tell you? what you preach? I, I'm trying you're to not. have a civil conversation. No, you're, you're not. Talking over me. You're exerting your authority over me. I don't, and I fully understand that. I'm really just trying to, I'm not trying to outdo you guys. I'm not that type of person. No, I don't want to. I don't want to fight with you. No, but you are You are being an antagonist right now. I'm sorry if you feel that way, but I just think that No, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Because okay. we're not the antagonists. We're actually the protagonists preaching the grand and ultimate protagonist that's Jesus Christ. I agree. I completely yeah. agree. Well, if you agree, then you can keep walking and just, I just don't praise think, the Lord I for just that. Don't think, I'm just telling you. I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be ugly, I swear. I just don't think I mean your fruit says otherwise. I don't think you're bringing her to Christ. Can you talk to me? What, what, can what, I talk what, to you? I don't you? think she's I'm bringing her to Christ. That, Definitely not. This sign is and if she is, she's bringing them to the wrong Christ. To openly rebuke anyone, it's not. It's none of your jobs to judge anybody but yourself. Well, that's what you said. No, the Bible doesn't say that. It's not your job to judge anybody. We can show you Bible. You want to hear the Bible? You want to see the Bible? I mean, we can show you the word. We can show you the word. Show me the word, then. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He forgave His one and only Son. I mean, we're not gonna knock you for not knowing Guess it. What? I knew half but you gotta one apply. One I'm just telling you. I'm just Sunday telling school. you. You're villainizing. Here, let me let me just time. read this too. And already, you're not bringing. You're not. Already, well, you're, you're not. You're not preaching already. love here, and I'm just telling you that this well, is this, this is, is not love. love. This is love. I do fear God. I don't need you to tell me that because you guys are not fully. I don't think you fear God though. I don't need that. You don't want to hear. You, you don't want to hear the word. You need to humble yourself. You guys think that you're holier than God. The Lord wants you to have a new heart. Because he said, out of the out of your heart proceeds thefts, proceeds murders, proceeds sexual morality. Jesus said, out of the heart proceed all these things. So he wants a brand new heart. Amen. They don't believe the world is saying to you. They think that I'm like some wicked devil. I don't know what they think. Right. Hey, hey. I'm, I'm challenging them. God is, but it's not, we're cha I'm challenging to get to the ground level. I could be wrong. We could be wrong. There's like, there's. We, are, we already established. Let's not go back. We already established. Follow Jesus. One day at a time. You don't walk in darkness. But you have the light of life. We already established that, so we don't need to go back on any other ground. I agree, but I feel like all people right here. See, this is, I guess this, this is where it all came from. This is where it is. This is where it is. It's like the judgment of this love. He wants to fill you with his grace. He wants to bless you with his spirit. What do you want? Put it up in the table. Jesus. And go to the bar. I have a light inside. Have a what? Have a light inside. A light? Okay, but, but again, it's going to bring us back to what we already agreed on. Follow me, and you won't walk in darkness. Now, here's the thing. Have nothing to do, like it says in Ephesians 5, Paul says this. Have nothing to do with the deceitful deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. I think of like pornography, I'm in that point. I think of rape, I think of murder, I think of like evil. And you think they're singing? But do you think are you saying anything that's 
team. Right? That, the bars from that is evil. Is Donald Trump evil? You think they're singing that in there? Is Donald Trump evil? Hold on. The bar. They're not. You think they're singing that in there? You need to partial from that is evil? I'm tired of doing the same old thing that the bar is evil. Absolutely evil. See, when I think of evil, my perception of evil is rapists, murderers, but horribly intentional. Drunkards in the same list? Yeah. Drunkards in the same list? Drunkards in the same list? Evil. But see, if you reject the law, the question is, what's a drunkard? That's the question. Someone's drunk. Someone who is drunk. Is a drunk. Like, no. That's like saying someone who lies is a lie. Someone who says I'm stupid is stupid. So you got it. But see, that's what it's got. That's where they got it. That's where they got it. That's where they got it. That's where they jumped up. We're all good, so I start challenging like this. The bottom. Someone who's a liar. Someone who's a drunk is a drunk. Someone who's a drunk is a thief. Something that's stupid? Does that make you, does that make you stupid? Say what? You say one stupid thing does that make you stupid? One stupid not a thing. Set. Does that make you stupid? Stupid and foolish are equated with each other in the Bible. You say one foolish thing does that make you foolish? Foolish. You could do something foolish. Not be a fool. It depends on oh, yes, something. You have to define whether if it is something against God's law or if it's not something foolish means you didn't know. You can know and still you know, not be you were ignorant of something. You, you can not be. You can know what you did wrong and still do it. But sin, we already, we already established. Sin, sin, sin is, is knowing, transgression. So, so, so sin is knowing. You have to know to him who knows the good he should do and doesn't do it. It's sin. You turn so that requires knowledge. So you can do Jesus. something foolish. Watch out for that. No one should be No one. No. You're not going to be a tough guy when you stand you before God. No one will do something foolish. You'll be like a little baby, and crying, then, begging God. You'll still not be a fool. You'll be tough anymore. No more tough guys before God. Okay. No, sir. A wise guy can do something foolish. You're be crying like babies before God. No. No, a white, a white, no, hold on. It depends, it depends we'll end up in the lake of fire, on whether God we're talking about you. something that's God wants to save you, you from your sin. To a rebellion to against God. You want to be new tonight? Or foolish in the free, sense of, free like, 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 like I, like I, 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 I was in a, in a lightning storm, in a lightning storm, I, 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 I stood out. Tonight. People going to the bar and rebellion against God? Hold on a second. They're not rebelling against God. Don't get angry. Going to the bar is not rebelling against God. They're not going in a rebelling against God. Well, some people here are actually going in the bar. Yes. Jesus said they're just doing that because they would hate. It's fun. That's who they are. It's fun. That's who they are. It's their nature. That's true, but it's fun. I like good time. Nature. They would hate. But the main thing is it's a good time. It's a good time. So they have developed a nature to go in there and have a good time doing that. Yes. So it's natural to them. So they're not they're actively soft. going there to rebel they're against God. Be no, they're, in their mind, they may not be thinking that. Right? Maybe subconsciously. In their mind, they, they may not they are. Like, in their no, mind, people, they're not thinking that. This may be your yes. last fight. You don't know. You don't no, know. You might it's get just into an accident. Are. You might get into it's a just fight. who they are. But so here's what Jesus said. Last night on earth. You must be born again. You don't know. Okay. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have passed away. So they're going in the bar. It's what they do for fun. All right. So they get in Christ. God is giving you a. God's going to make them a new creature, like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. And old things are going to pass away, and they're going to have brand new desires from the Lord. Amen. I know because I was, I was, I was. I same bar. My intentions when I go in that bar aren't the same intentions. Yeah, but you're giving hearty approval to it, man. And Romans 1 gives a whole list of sins, and he says, hey, here's these people who they're living in sin, and then there's those who give approval to it. Although they know the judgment of God, they give approval to it themselves. So are you going in there? When you're supposed to be humble and be separate and belong to the Lord.
I guess my point, I guess. No, I mean, that's us. I spent money for this. But my point, that could be a lot worse. Like that, there's that's worse a, a pedigree. Like if you're looking at a scale, yeah. no, there's that, worse than that is sure. like, to me, it's like on the. There's worse than I agree. Like there's like a whole litany of things on this side that could be a lot worse. That's why Jesus And I'm not saying they're going to go, but I don't think they're going to go to hell for that. If they die, if you die in your sins, you go to hell. If you die in your sins, the broad way. Look at this. Look at this. This is wrong. You need to come off the broad way. Get on the narrow gate. Get on the narrow gate. Get on the narrow way. Just read it. Okay. In the narrow way. In the narrow gate. Which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ right there. He died on the cross for your sins. That you might be saved. Wow, that's radical, man. So there are people that are going to die in their sins, man. And I don't want anyone to die in their sins. But brother, I'm telling you, I, I can be in a bar and I let y'all have a heart. Hundred percent. He tells you to come out from amongst them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch not what is that? See, my thing is, I'm surrounding myself from people that are like evil. I think they're evil people. Not evil. I think they're evil people. Like evil people, evil actions. Calling you out. I'm not felt, like, I don't, calling you out. Going to a, like, hey, it's, it's like what you do in the bar is what matters more than you hey, being in the bar. Slip it down. That's how, in my heart. That's how I believe. Being in the bar. Tonight, what would you do? Like, what you do in the bar matters more than you just being in the bar. Yeah. You can be in the bar. Same, you can be in the bar. Some people, hey, come on out here preaching the word of gospel in the bar. Pornography. Right? You want to go get him out? Would you? I really can. I don't know that that's my calling. That's your calling? What would you I'm not, do? Because I don't feel, I don't feel, I feel like I'm a hypocrite. There you go. Because you would be a hypocrite. I would. I would. I'm, would you I'm give your life? Now we're talking. Brother, I promise you. Now we're talking. I'm not, like, I'm not a, That's right. I'm not a saint. I'm not that's trying good. to pretend to be a saint. Hey, that's good. I'm not a saint. That's good. You don't but want I to be love a God. I promise you. That's where I got. I, like I agree. I agree with you. You don't want to be a hypocrite. I know. I wouldn't want to be a hypocrite. That's right. That's right. Because they'd be like, they'd be like, what are you yeah, doing yeah. in the bar, man? I should like it. Yeah, it's cool. yeah that, no, that's what they'd be saying. Like, they, they would recognize you. I, I, I would say, that's what I struggle with. I struggle with it because I don't know. I know I can do better. And I wonder if me not doing better is going to be like, like, even with God loving me, even no matter how much I love God, is that going to be enough to get me into heaven? I wonder. I do struggle with that. Love God? Just loving Him with all my heart. Is, yeah. that, is that enough? Well, if you love Him, okay. Just like what you can look at you can look at Christ all your heart and still disobey them. You could. I, well, no, no, no. It's not if, if you love them, you're just, this is what Jesus said. He says, if you love me, okay, John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, why do you say, Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things that I say? It grieves, it grieves the heart of God, right? He's like, if you love me, I'm saying if I do, do 85% of things right and 15% wrong, is that 15% gonna put me in hell? Hey, well, the Lord, the Lord wants to disciple us. You know, as 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 uh, if, we're, if we're born again, right? And we're a new creation, creation in Christ, right? And we we walk you with Him, okay? If you get off course, like we talked about, He's gonna chastise you because He's a shepherd, right? He's got He's got a rod and He's got a staff. Your rod, like Psalm 23, your rod and your staff, they come to me. They let me know that I'm a child. You know, if you need to get a spanking, you're going to get a spanking. I agree. Right? And it gets you back in line. You're like, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So, yeah. You know, if, if, if you disobey God, he's going to spank you. Right? And but, but we need to respond. Because, like it says in Hebrews 12, it says, those those chastisements, they bring forth the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. It brings forth good fruit. So praise God. You know what I mean? You know, just say, say Lord, I, you're my shepherd. I want to be I want to be your sheep. I want you to shepherd me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your rod and your staff. Thank you for your rod and your staff in my life. Okay? And you know what the Holy Spirit's work in our life is to conform us to the image of Christ. So he's working on us. He's working on us. I'm working progress. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I'm stubborn. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you've seen it by now. I'm stubborn. But I just can't. I'm just, like I said. Hey, but we had some I good, struggle we had, with it. We, we, we had some I, good I, I do talk struggle with it. We had some good talk. Is that 50% going right? to keep me out? I, I do struggle talk, with it. We had some good, good, good conversation. I appreciate you. Oh, yeah. I love you. I love you. I love you too, brother.
I promise you're all okay. Hey, now don't go hang out in the bar, though. Amen. Amen. I probably should. I yeah. probably should. Don't do it. Don't do it. But as long. Don't do it. Don't I guess hang out in the bar. The Lord has so much more for us now. I, I, I don't do this all the time. I don't know what I'm It's about boys in town. And then, uh, you know, they can, they, people can look at your life and they can see the good work that God's done in your life. You know what I'm saying? As you let him do that work in your life. As, as, as he's the potter and you're the clay. And you let him work in your life. And, you know the potter? They put the pottery on the wheel. And then they reach down in that pottery and they get all that gunk out. Get all that gunk out. And they form it and they make it into what, 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 what he wants it to be. And then others come and they look at that work of God in your life. They're like, wow. I remember him when, man, he was just a good I will preach the gospel, die and be forgotten, as long as you get the glory. Yeah, I will preach the gospel, I'll die and be forgotten, as long as you get the glory. Come on, sing it again. Well, I will preach the gospel, I'll die and be forgotten, as long as Yes, I'll preach the 